Welcome back to State Treat 2020 by You Define Wellness. I'm Michelle Jolly, the Wisconsin Sales Director for You Define Wellness, and your host for this session. This session, we're going to be doing life skill building. It's going to be it's entitled Peace of Mind. What are you really dealing with? And that's with Tracy Frank. Uh, Tracy loves sharing her personal journey from a typical consumer to a critical consumer. She has, she has transformed her life as a wife and a parent to teen boys to include non-toxic products and essential oils based products. She uses essential oils in all her clean body care, um, response to health challenges, overall wellness, and more. Supporting others on their journey to get out of toxin, get the toxins out of their lives is her passion, it's a passion of hers. Let's welcome Tracy. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm going to share some slides for the start of this. There we go. All right. All right, there we go. Oops. So um, we're going to get to a point um, where I'm going to do some information. I want it to be question and answer at any point. So throw questions in the chat window um, at any point, and we can pause and answer those. And then if you also have um, a cleaning product that you'd like to know, you'd like to look into or dive into a little bit, um, you and we'll have a spot when we talk about that. Thanks for the introduction, Michelle. It's really a pleasure of mine to, um, to be here to share uh, my journey and my knowledge. Um, like Michelle said, um, it's definitely been a journey for me and um, I just love sharing about essential oils at this point in my life and I'm thankful for this network and for all of you who are, who are joining us. So kind of how my journey started was uh, first of all motherhood, you know, when you have little ones, you suddenly think of everything you're putting in their mouths and on their bodies and um, it kind of reflect and look at ingredients in a different way. That's when it started for me as I started to question what is, you know, what's in this product, things like that. Um, and then a few years after um, I became a mom, my own mom had a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. And so I did a lot of research on neurotoxins and um, just toxins in our environment and food and um, cleaning products, makeup, all of that. And that really, her diagnosis of Parkinson's really led me on this journey to be even more critical about what I'm putting in my body, what I am using in my house, what I'm breathing in. So I'd like you guys, we're gonna do a different kind of poll. I'd like you uh, right now to do, I think by your name, you can choose a yes or a no. Um, and let's, I'll, I'll give you a choice if you're in between. So would you say that you are a critical consumer already and that you read the labels of everything that, of your cleaning products? Mark a yes by your name. And if you go to your, if you go to participants, and then on the bottom, it should say yes, no. You should be able to click that. So does everybody see where they can do that? Just want to get some feedback. And if you feel like, no, I'm not really a critical consumer yet. I'm kind of a typical consumer. Put no. If you feel like you're somewhere in between, you can just raise do the hand raise. So I see feedback from Donna. There was a was there a question in the chat window too? Or if you want to unmute your mic and tell me, <laughs> I was just trying to get a sense of people here. You know, do you feel like you're a critical consumer, a typical consumer, or somewhere in between?
Okay, so I'm seeing in the chat window some feedback. Okay, so it looks like we've already got a few critical consumers here. Um, so some of this, I'm just going to give you a chance to just read through. So I'll just give you a minute to read this slide. So in our, our list of, you know, kind of top to avoid, that's what I'm going to be demonstrating is alternatives to air fresheners, an alternative to dryer sheets, um, alternative to um, antibacterial soaps, alternative to oven cleaner, um, alternative to bleach. Um, and so those are some of the things that I share in this demonstration. Here's one more slide. This is one that really, um, struck me early on was the the word perfume or fragrance perfume and that you know that companies really don't have to show the list of ingredients once i started reading on labels and things i realized it just didn't have it said a 99 percent you know other ingredients well what does that mean you know they only have to label one ingredient um, and that the word fragrance is used all over the place and it's uh, often part of natural cleaners but that word fragrance can be used for hundreds of different synthetic chemicals and um, just, that, just that idea that not knowing what that chemical is that's called fragrance, um, not knowing what, where the or origin of it is, and what does natural mean? Because that word also doesn't have to have any certain regulation to be used. So all those things really made me question, um, and I, for a long time, I lived an unscented life. <laughs> unscented, you know, um, everything. Unscented dryer sheets, unscented laundry soap, unscented soaps, unscented, um, until five years ago. So I probably did the unscented life for about 10 years. And um, we just did unscented everything. And about five years ago, um, I discovered essential oils, and I haven't looked back. And that really helped me because I could have, um, not just the unscented products, but the trust in the products, some purity in the products, and, and some fun because I could have scents back in my life. Um, all right. So if you have something um, from your own cupboard that you want to explore, there's a link here. There are other ones, you know, there's questions of which sites are trustworthy and which sites have done their homework and research. and all of that. Um, there's a, a ton of different resources out there, um, but I just encourage you to really do your homework of what is safe. Um, your, what this is, the madesafe.org one actually gives you a list of all the different um, chemicals that can be used in products. And then uh, Environmental Working Group is one that um, will, will rate different products if, if you don't know the ingredients. Um, there's, you know, some question of environmental working group is supported by certain companies. So which companies um, support that and then which products get ratings. So, you know, you got to look at multiple sites, I think, when you're looking things up like that. But um, be a critical consumer would be my advice. Any questions at this point? I just wonder, like, I'm going to run a working group site, and then it's hard to find, like, if you use an MLM company, like Sheckley and all that, that kind of stuff, the cleaning products that they have don't get rated on there. Do you know if it's a place to find that? Or you just have to go by ingredient? You have to go by ingredient at that point. Yeah. All right. Yep. Good question. Yeah, so that's why that made safe one, um, you know, has all the ingredients, which is a good reference. All right. 
So um, what are essential oils? Um, essential oils, and I know some of you use them already, are made directly from nature. And um, this is actually a picture of me um, being part of an essential oil process from all the way from harvesting the um, grand fir trees to the process of distilling and bottling the oil. And so essential oils are that um, part of nature that the, comes out of either a root or in this case, the tops of trees, a flower, a leaf, a seeds. So there's different uh, ways to extract that oil. And, um, and the process usually that's used is steam distillation. Steam distillation allows uh, steam to enter the, pro the, the natural product and the plant product and then the, as the steam rises the oil comes out as well and then there's a condensing process so that the oil and the water are separated and then you um, have a purity process after that. So one of the big questions is are all essential oils um, created equal and the answer is no. Unfortunately the essential oil company uh, essential oil industry is also unregulated. So you can think, oh, I'm getting this product and it says essential oils for the fragrance, but you don't know the purity of those oils because there isn't a regulation on that either. Um, so what I really encourage people to do, again, be a critical consumer, do your homework, but to um, look for companies that have third party testing for purity and that can can walk that have their own farms that allow you to visit their farms that can walk you from basically planting the seed all the way to harvesting um, and then distilling the product um, that's one of the reasons why i trust young living and i'm young living distributors because i've seen that process and trust that process they do all hand weeding um, i was able this was this at this farm that we visited i was there for a week i was able to see the harvesting see the distilling and see the lab it's all at the same location and the lab is right there to test they test eight vials out of every batch um, and so just that purity testing is really critical as well and then the third party testing of someone who is you know um, going to be testing it for purity as well all right i'm going to give you a minute before I start um, up with some of the demonstrations, this is a slide with just um, a couple ideas of some recipes and things. So I'll give you a minute to read it, write any down that you want while I get my supplies organized to start giving the demonstration. And like I said, pop in with any questions at any point. And these recipes are not ones that I'm demoing today, but just a couple of ideas. And I really, I really like that uh, advice of the last line there. You know, think of what are your commercial cleaner scents like? Oh, lemon, you know, lemon fresh or um, orange, deep orange cleaner or pine scented. You know, those kind of things. Those are um, scented that way because those essential oils were traditionally used in cleaning. And so um, when you think of that, think of those oils, that's one way to kind of remind you of which oils might be good choices. Any questions here before we move on? Great. 
So one um, oil blend that I use a lot is Thieves, Thieves Essential Oil and Thieves Household Cleaner. And Thieves is a Young Living blend. Um, and it was started, um, it's inspired, I guess, based on the legend of the 15th century French thieves. They formulated a special blend that, of um, aromas and, and herbs that they used when they would go down um, and steal from the dead and the dying during the 15th century plague. And so they weren't getting sick. And so people were doing this research, you know, looking back and saying, who were these thieves that didn't get sick and were able to survive during this time? What were they using? And so this research has been done and it is a blend of clove, lemon, cinnamon bark, eucalyptus radiata, and rosemary. And a couple of those were on the previous slide, clove, lemon, and cinnamon bark. So it's a blend of those um, five oils. And then there's also the Thieves uh, oil itself. And then there's also the Thieves household cleaner, which is um, a concentrate. So the cleaner concentrate has those oils um, and plus a, a few other things. And then that um, is used, you dilute it. So a cap of this makes a cup or a bottle of this. So a bottle of the diluted all-purpose cleaner is about $1.60. So, um, you know, another thing to consider obviously is price, right? Is it gonna cost me more to not clean with these traditional, typical, if I start to be a critical consumer, does that mean it's gonna be more expensive? And, it, you know, in this case of the cleaner, it's not. Um, and, and the power, because this is nature distilled into a bottle, the power of these oils, they're concentrated. So you're talking one, two, three drops can be plenty for the work that you're doing. Um, with this cleaner, also, I mean, I make a variety of things. This is just a general cleaner, the one cap full. Uh, I use this for my counters, my floors, my um, bathrooms, pretty much windows, pretty much everything, you name it. Um, I also I make different blends for different purposes. So like a shower spray, this one has a little bit of vinegar, uh, like a teaspoon of vinegar, and then a cap full of the cleaner. And I use a blend of oils called Citrus Fresh with the shower spray. And the Citrus Fresh is just a blend of different citruses and peppermint. So that um, is what I used for my shower. And then this is a picture of this. I did this this morning, um, was cleaning some berries for breakfast. And this is a fruit and veggie soak. Um, so just a chance to clean your vegetables, your fruits, knowing that they're clean and that what you're putting in your body is clean um, is definitely a, very important to us. And one of the things that I do, and this, it, it, it was like three drops of this. So this uh, bottle will last me forever. So again, highly concentrated. Okay, so this is a picture of my um, oven and we're going to uh, clean the other half. <laughs> so half of it is clean, can you tell in the picture <laughs> that half of it is clean? So I did this this morning um, and now I'm gonna give you a little uh, tour of me doing the other half of it. So we'll see if I can. Hold this here, just a second. All right, so.
Mr. Tracy, while you're doing that, um, there was a question. Is there a way to make our own veggie and fruit beef soak, um, or do you have to purchase something already made? Tracy, I think we lost your audio. Can you hear us? Well, we're seeing a really clean oven. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that soak. Um, uh, yes. So I could, uh, I could, yes, definitely. You could um, use the essential oils that are a part of Thieves, um, or you could use a few drops of the Thieves oil. Um, I know I have seen recipes for making your own um, version of that. Yeah. I follow a Facebook group called Wild Hacks, and they put a lot of different recipes of, you know, do it yourself. So it's one of those things where if you want to completely do it all yourself and, and um, purchase your own essential oils and do everything from scratch, you can. Or there's the Thieves products to me sort of create that middle, um, you know, it's really easy to take a cap full of cleaner and, and two cups of distilled water and make this versus putting the certain drops of all the different oils in. And so it's about, um, you know, how much you want to spend, uh, or how much time you want to spend on the do-it-yourself part. But definitely, yes, people make their own. All right. Okay, so I'm going to take you on a tour of a few other things here. So this is my um, diffuser. And I use my diffuser all the time. It's always on in my kitchen. Right now I have a blend called Purification in it, and that is citronella, lemongrass, rosemary again, tea tree, lavender, and myrtle. And I really like this one for any time the air smells musty or um, just in a, in a bathroom. I, I make a little spray that I use as a bathroom spray with this one in it. Um, so that citronella, lemongrass, rosemary, tea tree definitely brings out um, a clean, fresh air scent. Then I also make my own room sprays. This was one I made at Christmas time. So it has different tree scents in it. Um, one of my favorite blends for either the diffuser or a room spray is lime. Oops, I got the wrong one. Lime, grapefruit, and spearmint. <laughs> kind of a unique uh, mix, but that's my, one of my favorites. So it's kind of, you, you learn what you like too, right? If do you want something fruity, do you like you know, something floral? Um, and then finding the oils that, that you like together. I really like um, citrus oils with a little bit of mint and um, spearmint is one of my favorites. I like peppermint too, but spearmint is a huge favorite of mine. All right, um, laundry soap. So um, for laundry soap, there's a Thieves laundry soap. And some people do make their own laundry soaps and add essential oils too. I've seen recipes for that. Uh, I'm more of the in-between do-it-yourself person. <laughs> um, I use this directly on stains. And that really works great at getting stains out. Also, lemon is great for um, whites, like a spot on... Um, a white shirt is great to use lemon. I use lemongrass a lot. Um, I use dryer balls. And in the dryer balls, then I add a few drops of essential oils onto the dryer balls. So instead of uh, fabric sheets. And I use lemongrass a lot for that, or that's the citrus, any kind of citrus oils. Um, some people like florals or lavender with their, uh, with their dryer balls. I do a bleach alternative, which is uh, a third cup of hydrogen peroxide. It's two caps of the Thieves Cleaner, some lemon and lemongrass essential oils, and then distilled water. So that's another one I do. 
Um, I'm not gonna make this, I'm gonna make uh, wipes with you guys, but I did out some of the ingredients for hand sanitizer, hand purifier. So they do make a thieves hand sanitizer that um, kills 99.9% .9 of germs. Um, I also got this one recently at the grocery store. It's called Base One Hand Sanitizer and it has natural ingredients. It's unscented with aloe. I didn't look at all the ingredients, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's just your basic alcohol, aloe vera, water, uh, which I would recommend if you made your own. <laughs> so this is actually the base already, and then I was going to add oils in between uh, in, into it. So I was going to add lavender and tea tree to the, um, to the hand sanitizer, the unscented one. Um, making your own, you do, if you want it to truly be sanitizer, you need to, um, it's not the oil that's going to sanitize it, it's the alcohol. So you want to use either a vodka or a rubbing alcohol that's 90%, I think, I think it's 91% or something or higher in order to be considered. Um, or it might be 70 even. I thought I heard 70 was the optimal. 70? Okay. I, that's what I have here. And that's what is typically rubbing alcohol is 70. So... Uh, rubbing alcohol, um, so I would do like two thirds cup rubbing alcohol, a third cup aloe vera. Some recipes call for vitamin E. You could do a teaspoon of vitamin E. I think that just helps with um, the dryness that you get from it. <laughs> and then lavender also is gonna help with the dryness that comes from using the alcohol and tea tree is going to have just a little extra power. The tea tree uh, historically is known for being um, an antibacterial. Uh, that's what it was historically used for. And I'll type in the bleach blend recipe in here uh, in a second. And um, with grease stains, the just like the grease that you'll see uh, come off of my oven door in a minute when we go back to that the thieves cleaner is great for grease and uh, lemon is also great for grease so I use those directly yeah and good suggestion uh, vegetable glycerin is good to prevent dryness as well all right so um, hand soap is another one or shampoos you know you can make your own uh, body care, cleaning products. Um, so Young Living sells a, a like a, a gel base that's just unscented and you can add what you want. Um, or a lot of people use like a unscented Castile soap. And then you can add your essential oils that you want. I make my own shampoo. Um, I just use the Castile soap. And my favorite to add to my shampoo, because I have uh, tend to have more of a um, oily hair is peppermint and cedar wood. So um, Castile soap with peppermint and cedar wood. I use a much smaller bottle that I make it in and I, I would say I probably use five drops of each. Peppermint with peppermint for their shampoo as well. Um, just one thing to remember as you're um, using oils is that because they're so concentrated is that you want to consider um, dilution. And so uh, a couple drops go a long ways. And if you are using them on your body or in, in any lotions, um, if you're using them straight on your body, you want to make sure that you're using a carrier oil, especially the first time you use it so, you, um, so that it's not so powerful. It also kind of slows the absorption rate. Um, and certain oils may not bother you. I use lot, lots of oils straight, but it's just something to be cautious of, and especially if we're using them with small children, using them with um, animals, with pets. Essential oils can be used, but you really want to consider that carrier oil. Um, I like grapeseed oil, liquid coconut oil, um, different blends of oils that I use too. All right, so I have another demonstration, but I'm gonna see about a couple of these questions in here.
was about pets. Um, and one of the rules that I follow with pets is I never put pets in a room with a diffuser where they can't leave if they choose to. Um, and then I don't put any oils directly on our pets. Um, the oil, the, yeah, the without, without dilution. And if I am going to use an oil for a certain reason on a pet, I will have them, I will put it on my hands and have them smell it and see if they stay by me or they run away. So I let them, I sort of let them decide <laughs> whether I'm gonna, um, gonna use it. But there's lots of different recipes as well for that. And I will get back to the bleach blend recipe in here. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little demonstration of, I think it might be messed if I do it right here. Okay, like I said, I use distilled water when I um, do my recipes because I don't always know all the ingredients in, you know, or not the ingredients, but all the, um, you know, things that might be in my tap water. And so I use distilled water just to have that purity because sometimes things can go sour if um, you're using just tap, regular tap water. Um, so I'm going to make some wipes. And again, these wipes, um, would not be necessarily considered disinfecting, 99, killing 99.9% .9 of germs. I'm not gonna make that claim. Um, but um, there is, a, I'm putting witch hazel in it, so there is a little bit of um, alcohol in it as well. So I will, I'll type the recipe in for that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a roll of paper towel and I'm gonna cut it in half. And that's going to be, my wipes that I put into to the center here, into that, um, into the mixture. So I thought about doing this ahead of time. Maybe I should have. <laughs> that'll help the soap kind of um, dissolve quicker. So it's two cups of warm water. Two cups of warm water. And a tablespoon of Castile soap. Since it's the warm water, it should help it kind of dissolve in there. Okay, and then it is um, two tablespoons of witch hazel. And this witch hazel does have um, alcohol in it. I'm going to add that next. All right, and then 10 drops of the thieves, or you could use um, You could use a few drops of clove, a few drops of cinnamon, um, a few drops of eucalyptus, and a few drops of rosemary. The lemon is the only one I didn't say that's in there. And then the lemon, you do add lemon to this as well, additional lemon. And then this one, um, this recipe calls for 10 drops of the purification, which I said is the citronella lemongrass tea tree blend.
And then five drops of lemon. And tea tree is also, um, you might be here, here called Melaleuca, um, just for another name in case you notice that and you, tea tree is its common name. All right, so that was two cups of warm distilled water, one tablespoon of the Castile soap, two tablespoons of the witch hazel, five drops of thieves, or 10 drops of thieves, 10 drops of purification, five drops of lemon. Got paper towel all over me. <laughs> okay, so then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna um, just soak it with the mixture. Stir it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back later and take out the inner part of the paper towel, the, um, the roll, and so that it, that'll just be wet. Take that out and then you'll be able to take out, you know, one at a time as you're using them too. So I'm just going to put the lid on that, kind of uh, shake it up, mix it around so that the oils get all over everything and let that sit. And then our last, go back to the oven and see how that's doing. Any other questions that have come up? Um, hi, uh, I have a question. I'm wondering, uh, do you have anything to suggest for like getting rid of ants? Um, we have ants outside and I don't want to use anything that's poisonous because of the uh, other animals. Yes, uh, in fact, that's funny. I almost took a picture of it because I, um, our front bathroom in the spring always gets ants and I just mm -hmm. saw them in there today and I use peppermint. Oh, okay, just straight? Yep, on a, I put it on a um, like a little cotton ball and just put it in the areas where they seem to be coming in or their paths are. Great. Now, if it's outside in the dirt, should I just um, drop some peppermint oil in the area? Yeah, you could do that. Um, I've also heard of uh, people using tea tree. Okay. Aluka as well. Um, yes. Great. I have both. I'll get on that. Yeah. Thank you. So I would say that, you know, not always with essential oils do I have the uh, quickness of maybe a chemical product. Um, but I would say with like the ants, I might have to go back and put peppermint on three or four. So it might be discouraging, right? Because I'm like, oh, well, that didn't work. Um, but if I put peppermint on three or four times and do it every couple days, then I really notice that it does. Does that make sense? Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right, any other questions before? Yeah, with, um, so question, will I send or post my recipes? Um, I can give you my email at the end if anybody wants me to message them the PowerPoint with the recipes, I can do that. Is that maybe the best way to do it? Here, I can put my email in the chat window right now. If anybody wants copies of the recipes, then I can just send them to you. Thanks for asking. All right, we're gonna go back to my oven. Um, 
Hopefully it hasn't sat up too long. Um, I am gonna add baking soda for scrubbing power to the oils that I have on the oven. And um, then I'm gonna use a scrubber. I use a lot of Norwex products, and if you've uh, used any Norwex, it's, um, it's a company out of Norway that puts, and there's not actually in this product, but silver in a lot of their cleaning products. Yeah, and Norwex really allows you to use less chemicals overall. So I use a lot of their, um, their dish to, or their washcloths and um, their environmental cloth, they call it. You save the environment because you're using less cleaning products in general. Uh, I use it with thieves. They, they say you don't need to use any cleaner with it because it has the microbial silver in it. But um, I use it with thieves and it doesn't damage it because thieves is a natural um, base cleaner. So, all right, so we're gonna, do one more view of my oven here okay so I'm going to put a little bit of the baking soda on for some scrubbing power and it might have sat a little bit long so I'm going to spray it with it didn't sit quite as long when I did it this morning Feel free to ask more questions while I'm scrubbing. <laughs> and what I noticed this morning is it was probably, you know, a couple minutes of me scrubbing and then it was, it was all gone. So um, just getting at that, that build, it, build up of the grease. And I, one, you know, that I, I have a friend who does a cleaning business and she buys lemon from me exclusively <laughs> because she loves the power of lemon. What about grease and clothes? Do you yeah. use oil right on clothes or? Yeah, lemon can work with that as well. Um, but I'm, I'm really finding using the Thieves Cleaner straight on clothes is what, what I'm using the most for. Um, for grease. <laughs> what? <laughs> My son's holding the, the computer for me and one of his sweatshirts kept having the stain on the front and I kept not getting it out. Um, and I tried my bleach spray and it didn't really work. And um, then when I used the, um, the Thieves Cleaner straight, that made the difference, so. All right, you probably can't tell. This is coming out. Um, gonna need a little bit more of my elbow grease, but I think you could tell in my picture of almost almost all the way out um, the picture that I put out at the beginning on the slideshow of you know from the half that I had done this morning to the half that I didn't have done what a difference it made so I won't make you watch me scrub till the end <laughs> it's almost there and then I'll come back and wipe it with uh, environmental cloth in the um, one of the window uh, cleaners as the window towels as well to kind of polish it. So. All right. And that's really all I have planned for us. What other, if you have other questions, I can type in some of the recipes here too. The bleach blend, and it's a bleach alternative obviously. Other questions about essential oils, you know, we also um, use essential oil based things for um, makeups and body care products and um, deodorants, toothpaste. And, you know, there's really like, it's, it's beyond just, just the cleaning supplies. I also use essential oils for, um, I really have a strong interest in using essential oils for um, emotional health. And mental health so I do a, a therapy called aroma freedom technique and um, support people who are looking for um, either like trauma release or goal setting or just uh, 
looking at releasing some emotional patterns and I have some trainings in the, in that, in those areas. So that's another passion of mine with essential oils, um, as well. So yes, the feelings kit has all of the oil blends that, um, that are connected to different emotions. So, um, yeah, I'll type in the bleach alternative here, but maybe sharing some of that might bring up other questions. Yeah, lots of great ideas, Tracy. Thanks for all the recipes and ideas of how to move away from the chemicals. Really helpful. Good. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, it's but for me, it's been a journey of five years. So I'm always learning, always trying new things, always moving in the direction of what else can I replace. Um, and so uh, it can be overwhelming at first. And uh, I just encourage people to, you know, pick one cupboard, pick one product, uh, one area of your life, and and focus there. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah, one at a time, and yeah, don't try to do everything all at once. Right. Yeah, maybe something you use the most of, or yeah, good idea. Yeah. All right. Um, well, if anybody has any other questions, you can just put them in the chat box. Um, but we'll wrap things up here. Um, yeah, so thanks again, Tracy. Yep, and thank you for, thank you everyone for being here and thank you for hosting this. I just put the bleach alternative uh, blend in the chat window. Yeah, all right, thanks. A reminder that Tracy Frank is one of the providers on our network, and you can find her at You Define Wellness, which is Y O U Define Wellness.com, and connect with her there. Or she put her email earlier in the chat box, you can just email her directly. Um, and then if you own the Healthy Living Savings Card, she has a discount there, which is 25% off any of her services, and she's mentioned a few of those. You can find that list on the website also. Um, and the cards, reminder, are only $49.50. They don't expire. Um, there's, you can share them with your family, use them as many times as you want. Uh, and there's plenty of other savings you can find on our website. And they're available to purchase on the website also. So we'll stop recording.